Hey guys, it's Funny Animator Gym TV, and in this and in these few next few videos, I'm going to be showing you how to make a Super Mario Odyssey remake on Scratch. So this is what we're going to be accomplishing in the in the first tutorial. We're going to get basic scrolling like this. That's all we're going to be doing in the first tutorial. So first thing, a few things I'd like to mention. Huge thank you to Griff Patch, who supplied the basic scrolling engine that I've been using for my Super Mario Odyssey scrolling projects and I'll be using it for this one as well. He made it super easy to understand and it never crashes and it's always and it's really working well for me and I think it's gonna work really well for this tutorial. All I've been doing in my Mario projects is I've been adding most of the I've been adding all the other features that make it Super Mario Odyssey themed, like Cappy, extra movement options for Mario captures, etc. And also, and also, I'd like to give a huge thanks to One Two Three Animations. He made Super Mario Super Mario tutorials on Scratch uh, when 1.4 was around. He made YouTube tutorials for how to make a Mario game in Scratch that I think inspired a lot of a lot of people, including myself on making Mario, on making all kinds of projects in Scratch. He showed the possibilities of what you could do. He worked really hard on those tutorials and I'd like to make some tutorials on my own. Also, uh, thank you to Nintendo for making Super Mario Odyssey. I am not uh, claiming that Super Mario Odyssey is my own title. It is Nintendo's and this is a tribute to Nintendo. And also, um, I think, I hope that these videos are going to get myself and a lot of you guys motivated about 3.0 and it's going to get us used to it, it's going to get me used to it and I hope the people watching it are going to have it get, are going to, I hope it's going to be useful to you guys. So first off I'm going to show you how the project works, how this Mario engine is going to be working. So first off this forever loop right now that my mouse is over is going to be the only forever loop in our in this project. Uh, and what this forever loop single signals is every time it checks this forever loop, one frame is going to go by, and that one frame is going to be in this block right here. This block right here is going to do everything in one single frame. And then you're going to have this broadcast frame and weight, which is going to broadcast to all the other sprites, all the other sprites, what one frame is going to, how one frame is going to affect them. So, so basic, so so we're going to take a look at this. Also, uh, what's really nice about 3.0 is that not only can you use the the scrolling wheel on your mouse. To scroll up and down like this but if you hold the shift key and scroll you can scroll left to right which is great you no longer have to use these things on the side that is great also okay I'm gonna show you all the variables because I think they're over here on the left I think that's gonna give us a good understanding of what's going on in this project so first off capture target and all, uh, like uh, all of these variables, it's very clear what their purpose is. So capture target, if we're capturing something, then the capture target, say we're capturing Goomba, we're going to have this say Goomba right here in the zero. If it's zero, then that means we're not capturing anything. Um, if Now the, the capture speed X and speed Y, we'll get to those later. Controllable. This means if we are able to control the player or not. So, for example, if you grab a moon, or if you're current, if you're going through the capture animation, or there's a transition or something like that, you don't want to be able to jump or throw Cappy or do any of that stuff. So, controllable will be zero when you're not able to be controlled. So, right now, controllable is one because we're able to move around and jump and do stuff. Uh, now these five here, key, uh, up, down, left, right, and Y, this, this is really useful. You see every time, right now I'm pressing the left key and left is on one. And now I press right 
and it's right now one. So you see all of these buttons here I'm pressing on my keyboard and it shows this. And the nice thing about this is if I scroll over here you see what I've done here is uh, when I shared my original Super Mario Odyssey projects a lot of I had left arrow, right arrow, up arrow, down arrow, and Y only as the only options for controls. A lot of people were complaining that I did not implement WASD, W-A-S-D keys. So this allows me to do that. If either of them are pressed, then it sets the key left pressed to one, which is great. So now all I have to do is check to see if this key right is pressed or key up is pressed or whatever. So that's what those five variables are used for. That's really useful. Also, another variable we're going to be using a lot, of, well, not much, but here, Mario costume number. Basically, in this whole project, we're not going to be, barely, we're barely going to be using any of these switch costume two blocks, these purple blocks. The only one we're going to be using is down here, switch costume to Mario costume number. Right now it's two, and right now we're switched to this Mario costume two. So throughout the project, oh, we're only going to be changing this Mario costume number, and then this this costume this costume block right here is going to set to it. Mario falling, this is detecting whether we're on the ground or not. So right now we're just on the ground, so it's zero. If we're jumping or falling or anything, that number is going to be more than zero. It's not going to be zero. But whenever we're on the ground, it's always going to stay at zero. So this is how we're going to detect if we're on the ground or not. Speed X and Speed Y, Mario Speed X and Speed Y. It's good. That's going to be for how fast we're moving and how fast we're falling or jumping. We're going to be using that a lot too. Mario State. Right now we're not using this for anything, but it's going to be really useful later on. And the Player X and Player Y. This is determining where the player is on the screen. So not, not where the player is, but their theoretical position in the scrolling world. So, like here, if I move over here, right now it looks like we are at the center of the screen, x would be 0, but really we're at position of 220. That's what these variables are for. And we're going to be using these even for captures. We're going to be using those when we're capturing something as well. And finally, really important scroll x scroll y next scroll x and next scroll y you don't need these next scroll x and next scroll y we did we don't really need those but they are going to be helping us with getting a nice smooth scrolling effect so you see how it's catching up every time we stop moving it's really nice and smooth that's that's what this is going to be for and also the scroll x and scroll y are keeping track of the whole position of what's going on in the scrolling. So those are all the variables that we're using right here. And now let's get into actually making the project. Okay, so I've just created a new project and this is how we're going to be starting it. I've just called it Mario Tutorial Part 1. So I've deleted the cat and we're going to make a new sprite. So we're going to come over here to choose a sprite and to create your own sprite you just click the paintbrush to paint a sprite. And the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to make what's called a hitbox. So we're going to we're going to zoom in here and let's just make it black. You can make it any color you want cuz you're not really going to be seeing it, but I'm just going to make it black cuz that's the most common. We're not going to have it have any outline and we're going to make it a square or actually a rectangle we're going to make it a rectangle and the way that this works is we have to have it perfectly centered horizontally we have to have it perfectly centered horizontally like this let's see i don't think that's perfectly centered so all i'm going to do so what i'm going to do is that looks like a good size around this size see over here that looks like a good size for mario 
Uh, I'm just going to draw a line right here, and a line right here, so that we know that that's the center. And that looks about right. You see there's about four split here and four split here. How many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's good. Let's just make it that. Let's just put it down a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That looks perfect. Actually, I'm going to make it a little taller. Like that. And then make it about like that. That looks good. Now we can delete these lines. So it's perfectly centered. And I'm just going to call it hitbox. Hitbox. So what is this used for? Well, this is used for... Uh, is it, if we had the... Mario costume actually detecting whether we were up against walls or not, then we would then it wouldn't be very smooth. Like we would run into walls and then things would get caught on things, like the brim of his hat might get caught on things, or if its arms sticking out, then it would get caught on the walls. So this is what we use to detect whether we are hitting walls or not. Later on, we're going to replace this with Mario costumes. I'll show you how to do that later. So we're just going to call this Mario. We're just going to call this Sprite Mario. And what we're going to, I'm going to, we're going to, let's make all those variables that I just showed you. So make a new variable, new variable for all sprites. Make sure it's all for all sprites. Let's start with player X and player Y. So make it player X, make a new variable called player Y. If you need to delete a variable, then just right click on it and it'll say delete the player x variable or delete whatever variable you want it to be, whatever variable you right clicked on. So now we're going to make a new variable. Let's call, let's do scroll x, scroll x, and scroll y. Make sure these are for all sprites. And let's do and scroll x and scroll x and end scroll y because we need those as well and now let's make mario costume number mario costume number that's what we need and now also very important mario speed x mario speed x and mario speed y mario speed y and now we also need uh, Mario's state. Mario's state and what else? Uh, controllable. Controllable. All of these are for all sprites, by the way. Also, capture target. Capture target. And then we need uh, Mario falling. That's also really important because that's how we're going to detect if we're on the ground or not. And also we need capture speed X and speed Y. So capture speed X and capture speed Y. And the final sprites, final variables that we need are if keys are pressed or not. So. Now you don't have to make these variables, but I like to have them because it allows you to have multiple control styles. So first one we're going to make is key left pressed. Key left pressed. And then we also need a key right pressed. Then we need key up pressed. Key down press. And finally, key Y pressed. You can also call this key capped pressed or whatever, but I like to use Y. And there they are, they're all the variables that we need. So let's just let's just hide all of these. Okay. So we're going to grab a when green flag clicked, because that's how you start the project. And now we're going to go to my blocks down here, my blocks, and we're going to make a block. 
I'm gonna call this Respawn Mario. Respawn Mario. Because when you, if you say you fall into the void or you die to an enemy, then you want to be respawned as Mario. So we're gonna do Respawn Mario. This is very important. You come down here, click run, make sure this is checked. Run without screen refresh. That means that this block is gonna be ran instantly. It's gonna run like this. It's not going to take any time at all. There are certain instances where you want to use this check mark and when you don't, um, right now we want to because we want Mario to be instantly respawned. So we're going to click OK. Now we have this respawn Mario and right away we're pretty much just going to want Mario to be respawned right away. And here we're going to be setting a bunch of variables. So we're going to set capture target to zero which makes sense because you don't want Mario to be capturing something if he's respawned. And you also want to set controllable to 1 because we want Mario to be able to be walked around pretty much immediately after being respawned. Also, uh, Mario Speed X. Mar no, no, no. Mario State. You want it to be standing still, pretty much. We're not really going to be using this Mario State variable in the first few tutorials. It's going to be really useful later on though. And also, what do we want? We want to set the player x. Well, we'll figure out. We'll figure that out later. For now, let's just set it to 0 and we'll also set player y to 0. Player y to 0. We also want to set scroll x and scroll y to 0 and we'll also tweak with that later. And also next scroll x or n scroll x and n scroll y to zero and also speed x and speed y to zero mario speed x and mario speed y to zero and also mario falling to zero we want to just set a lot of these things what else do we have here um i think that's about it oh M mario costume number we want to set it to 2. We're going to set that to 2 right for now. What else? Is there anything else that we need to set? That seems about good. That seems like we're good. So, respawn Mario. And now we're going to get something. We're going to make another block. We're going to call it position player. Position player. The reason why we call this position player, also make sure to check and run without screen refresh. The reason why we call it position player and not position Mario is because this is going to be for all sprites, pretty much. For I mean, for all capture targets. So that's Mario, including Mario and other capture targets like a Goomba or whatever. So position player, we want to include all uh capture targets, so that's why we call it player. Run without screen refresh, okay. And now, this is really important. Uh, we're gonna go to this, we're gonna go to X, we're gonna get a minus operator. We're gonna put it in both of these. We're gonna get set player X to player X minus N scroll X. And we're going to do the same thing with player y minus n scroll y. This is basically going to put our player on the screen wherever it's based on whatever the scrolling position is and what the player's actual position is. So, and also what I like to do before this is we're going to set some things. We're going to set player x and player Y to round player X and player Y. So we're just going to right click on the player X and put it in there like that. So this this is going to be really useful. We're going to use this basically everywhere. So position player, this block right here, whatever this block does, it's going to do this. A lot of people get confused on that but these red or pink blocks are really easy to understand. Position player. And now we're going to just put go to front because we want to go to front. And now here's our forever loop. 
so forever loop forever and now we're going to get our keys pressed we're going to figure out what keys are being pressed so I'm making a new block called keys pressed and run without screen refresh click OK and here's our keys pressed we're going to put that in here for now keys pressed and basically we're going to get if statement so we're going to get if else so if and we're going to put an or in here if key left is pressed so if key left arrow is pressed or key w is pressed key w is pressed and this is going to be good so basically if you prefer to use the arrow keys or wasd keys if you want to add more control styles like if you wanted to add i don't know i j k and l then you just grab another OR thing and then put one of these in here and then put your other key in there. So key I or whatever key, you put that in there. I'm only going to be using two control styles here. So left arrow or key W press. Now you want to get a set thing and set key left pressed to one. Also, I forgot to say this. Whenever, uh, whenever something is true, we're going to be setting it to 1. Whenever it's false, we're going to be setting it to 0. So we just duplicate this and put it to 0 when it's not being pressed. So if key left arrow pressed or key W is pressed, then yes, a key left is pressed. So set it to 1. Otherwise, there's no left key being pressed, so we set it to 0. And now we're just going to duplicate this. And we're going to do the same for the right arrow right arrow or key and we're just gonna I'll do all of them you can duplicate the top one and duplicates both of them so then there's up arrow down arrow and then duplicate one more time for space or actually Y I prefer to do it for Y so Y and then go for these so we put left arrow and W right arrow and W that's not true so right is D so we're gonna get D here and then up arrow oh no 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 sorry W was incorrect I'm sorry about that left is A sorry about that up is W down is S S and Y is space right space so now if we try this say let's come over here and show these things show these variables that we just got key left press key right press key up press key down press and key y press let's just click the green flag and start pressing some keys oh i see what i did wrong i did not change these right here i did not change these so if key right arrow or key d pressed this needs to be changed to key right pressed and key right pressed and this needs to be changed to key up pressed key up pressed and this needs to be changed to key down pressed key down pressed and you guessed it this needs to be changed to key Y pressed and now if we press buttons you can see it's working when I'm pressing the left arrow it's one or when I'm pressing W or when I'm pressing A it also goes to one so whatever control scheme I want the player wants to use we're welcome to use it so that's how you detect if other keys are being pressed so now let's hide these and let's get on to the actual game loop so we're gonna come to my blocks and we're gonna make a block and call it one frame one frame you, you don't have to call it one frame but I think that that makes it uh, easier to understand and make sure click run without screen refresh click OK and now put this after the keys pressed and now also very important go to events and now broadcast new message and call it frame you, you, you don't have to call it frame, but just call it frame.
and put it after the one frame. If you put it anywhere, if you if you put anything after this one frame, say for example, anything, size, whatever you want, if you put it after the broadcast frame, in other words, if you don't have the broadcast frame and wait at the end of the forever loop, for some reason, your frame rate is going to get lagged by a ton. For some reason, um, I'll show you that later because there's not really a lot going on the screen right now. But you always want to keep this broadcast frame and wait at the end, at the end of the forever loop, the last thing there. So first, what's going to happen in one frame? Well, first, we're going to see how to set up the scrolling part of it. So we're going to get set next scroll X and next scroll Y to player X and player Y. And then we're going to duplicate that and set scroll X and scroll Y to next scroll X and next scroll Y. And then in between those, we're going to position the player. And now we're going to go, we're going to make a new sprite and we're going to call it collision. This is basically what's going to be the ground. So you can make it green. So we'll, we'll make it green like grass. And we'll make a rectangle like this and we'll make a second rectangle. Or a wall or something. We're going to change these later, but this is basically how it's going to work. And then we'll just do that. Okay. So and we'll just call this one for now. And we'll call the sprite collision. Collision. And now what we're going to do in the collision sprite is, first of all, you can just do a one green flag click and hide block. And now remember when the forever loop goes by, we're going to trigger Mario's frame and then every other frame. Every other sprite is going to receive this frame. So we're going to go in this collision sprite and click and do this when when I receive frame and now we're gonna get an if else statement and in the top one we're gonna put show and in the bottom one we're gonna put hide and we're also gonna get a go to and put that before the if else statement and we're gonna just sim similar we're gonna put this in similar to how we did the Mario Mario here for this position player we did player X minus next scroll X and player Y minus next scroll Y. We're going to we're going to do zero minus because we want we, we want this collision to be centered at zero zero. That's where we want it to be centered. So you put whatever coordinates you want in these first two the first bubble of the minus operator and then you get scroll X and scroll Y and you put it in here and the way that this works is if your if any sprite or any costume goes off the coordinate limits it starts getting pushed towards the screen it starts getting pushed it doesn't go any further it doesn't go any further past you see when I you see, if I try to make this change y by negative 50, see, it's going to keep going, it's going to keep going, but then it stops. You see, it's not going to go any further because it'll be off screen. So, basically, we're going to use that, and it, it's x position, and it's y position is not getting any lower. So, we're going to do, if, we're going to get two equal signs. And we're going to put if x position and y position really do equal these things that we just told it to do, then we're going to show. Otherwise, it must be off screen and we hide it. So basically, that is how this collision sprite is going to work. You put whatever coordinates you want it to be at in these numbers here. And then, if we try this over here, 
you see it goes right to the center because that's where we told it to do it. But there's no way we can control the player now. So now we need to add some control into our player so we can actually control it. So we need a few if statements. So first, the first one we're going to do, which is really important, is if we're actually able to be controlled. So if controllable equals one, if controllable equals one, then we're actually able to move. So then now we need another if statement inside of that. If capture target equals one, where's capture target? There it is. If capture target equals zero, sorry, not one, zero. Because if it's zero, then we're not capturing anything, so we're Mario. So this is the Mario sprite, so that's why we need this. And then we need an if else statement. We need an if else statement because this is going to be basically saying if we are moving, if we're pressing left or right keys, then we're moving. Otherwise, we're not moving. So if we're, so we're going to need an or in this. And then we need if right if left key left pressed equals one. So if we are pressing some left key, remember we're using these variables that we made. Or key right pressed equals one. Then we're going to be moving. So we need to detect which one we are pressing. So if left pressed equals one. First of all, we need to face in the right direction because we want Mario to look to the left. So we point in direction negative 90, which is the direction for pointing left. And then we're going to set our Mario Speed X to a negative number, say negative 6. I think that's a good number. If you want him to run faster, then you increase this number, so negative 10, or decrease it, like negative 2 or something, if you want him to run slower. So I think negative six is a good number. And then you duplicate this and do it, do the same thing for the right arrow. So if key right is pressed, now you gotta flip these. So 90, and you can also use this to rotate around. So you point in the direction you want, 90 to the right, and you flip this number. So Mario speed next to six. That is gonna figure out which way Mario's moving or not. And if we're not moving, so if we're not pressing left or not pressing right, then you set Mario Speed X to zero. Because then we're not moving and we're not having any speed at all. So the next thing we need is a block to actually convert this Mario Speed X into this position player block and for, to detect whether we're hitting a wall or hitting the ceiling or hitting the floor and stuff like that. And we're going to use one block to do that. We're going to make a new block. We're going to call it Move Mario and make sure it's run without screen refresh. And this is really cool. We're going to add two of these inputs. We're going to add one for speed X and one for speed Y. And make sure it's run without screen refresh and click OK. Now we've got this block, and basically what this is going to do is we're going to change. We're going to change player X and player Y, which is our player's position. Change player X and player Y by speed X and speed Y. That's going to affect our player X, and then we can position the player, position the player, which is what we want because that position player is going to convert our player X into an actual X position that can be put on the screen. So then what we can do is we can take this move Mario block at the end of this capture target thing. Move Mario, Mario speed X. So we're going to get our Mario speed X. And it's important that we do it one direction at a time, so we can't do this, we can't do that, because otherwise that's going to make our collision really glitchy, and put zeros in here, put a zero in there, and a zero in here. So we do one direction at a time, that's going to make it a lot more stable. And in between this, we want gravity to change, so we're going to change gravity, so we're going to change speed y, we want gravity, change it by a negative number, so say negative one. 
And then we're going to put all of this before our scrolling. We're going to put that up here. So we do our detection if we're controllable, if, we're our, if we are Mario, so we're not capturing anything. If we are moving, if we are pressing a left or right arrow, then we're moving left or right and do our speed X. If we're not, then we're not moving, so set it to zero. Then we move the player, we change gravity, and then we finally do all our scrolling. So let's see what happens. Oh, we're falling. Look at that. We're falling, so that's something. We're making good, good progress. But the problem is we're not actually hitting the ground. So we have to check for collision to make sure that we don't just fall through the ground like that. So what we're going to be doing is first, if we're not touching the collision after one frame, because remember, this is all going in one frame, so it's going to check this every frame. So if we're not touching collision, so if we're not touching, touching our collision, then we can just stop the script because because it's fine, because we're just fine, right? If we're not touching the collision, then we can just proceed onward. Otherwise, then it's going to keep going if we are touching it. So, first off, if we're doing a speed, e a speed Y movement, then speed X is going to be zero. So, if speed X equals zero, nope, didn't mean to add a comment, just drag it. If speed x equals 0, that means we're doing a speed y movement, whether it's up or down. Then we can set our Mario speed y to 0. Set our Mario speed y to 0. And that's really neat, because if you think about it, say we're doing an up or down movement. If, we hit, if we're going up and we hit the ceiling, then you don't want to keep going up. You just want to stop your momentum right there when you hit the ceiling. Or if you hit the floor, you don't want to keep going through the floor. You just want to stop going down through the floor. So either way, you set your speed Y to zero. So that's really, that's really nice. Now, otherwise, if we're doing a speed, if we're doing a speed X movement, then we want to repeat this. We want to do a check. So we want to try and get out of whatever wall that we're coming into. So, you can repeat around seven times. I think seven is a good number. Then we're going to change player Y by one. And every time we do that, we got to position the player to see if they've hit something or not, or if they haven't, actually. Because immediately after that, we're going to check. If we're not touching the collision, then we can stop the script. Otherwise, if during those all seven times, we are after seven checks, after we move seven pixels and we're still in the wall, then we have to undo everything that we just did. So we have to change our player Y by negative seven. We have to change it by negative seven. And also we have to undo this that we just did because it turned out that this change in player X and player Y was breaking breaking our laws it was it was going into a wall so you can't have that so not only do you have to change it by negative seven but you also have to change it by speed y and the same goes for speed x because it must have been a collision that's breaking the laws of physics so that's what we have there and we have this here, we're going in speed x first, we change by gravity, then we check speed y, we've got our collision detection, and we are hitting the surface, and we're not falling through it anymore. But if we walk off, then we're not touching collision anymore, and we're just falling. So, and also we can move left and right, because we have set this up right here, we've set this up, and if we go to the left, then we're gonna hit our wall right here. We, um, we're not able to move left anymore. The only thing we can't do is jumping. If I press up arrow or W, it's not jumping. What we need to do is we need to come in our controller in our similar to in the similar area to where we have our if key left press equals one or key right press equals one. So we're gonna get something like this 
we're going to have if key up pressed equals 1, then this time it doesn't have anything to do with horizontal movement, it has to do with vertical movement. So we're going to set our uh, speed y to a big number, like say 20 or something. And then you can put that right here after our left and right arrow pressed. And if we try that, we're going to press up and we get a burst of momentum. So, but if I keep holding up, here's the thing, if I keep holding up, we're just going up and up and up because the game has no limit of detecting if we're on the ground or not. So, basically we need to check if we're on the ground or not and for that we turn back to our Move Mario script. If we're doing a speed Y movement, which is right here, then we have to set our Mario falling to zero. So if we this is if we didn't hit the collision, then we stop. Otherwise, we must have hit something. If we're doing a speed Y movement, if our speed Y is less than zero, so otherwise, if we're falling, then we hit something. So we must have hit the floor because it's the only thing that we could have hit. So if our speed Y is less. Than zero. Actually, we can also do this by having an if not speed y is greater than zero. So you have to get a new one, a greater than. If not Mario's speed y is greater than zero, then you set falling to zero. This is where we're going to use that falling. So if we get our variables and show Mario falling, show what it is. You see right now it's zero because we hit the bottom. And otherwise, every frame we're gonna we're gonna change Mario falling by one. Say right here. So if we do a jump, you see all of a sudden we're falling, or if we fall off, we're falling. So it's a number bigger than zero. It's a number greater than zero. So that's how we're gonna detect if we're on the ground or not. If we're on the ground or not. If we're on the ground, then it's well, then falling is going to be set to zero. If it's not, if we're falling, if we're off the ground, then we're not going to be. Then it's going to be a number greater than zero. So that's how we're going to detect if we're able to jump or not. So if key up pressed is one and falling is something like less than three or something like this, falling is less than three because instead of having falling equal zero we're gonna give a little bit of leeway so you see here if I keep holding up now it's not gonna you see that I'm, I'm holding up and it's bringing me right back down because we put this limit in so that is how you add jumping. And one more thing we're going to add is we're going to affect our gravity right here. So we're going to have an if else statement. And you know in professional Mario games, if you just tap the key, you get a little burst of momentum. But if you hold it, then you jump higher. So that's what we're going to do right here. We're going to say if up pressed is 1, then we're going to change gravity by a small number. Actually, I'm going to decrease. I'm going to make it a little lower so like minus 1.5 and if we're not if it's not being pressed then we're gonna make the change in gravity more so 2.2 and then we're gonna put this in here where it was now if I just tap it then we get a little jump but if I hold it then we get a much longer jump I'm gonna decrease this number a little bit here if we hold it we get a much longer jump whereas if we just tapped it See that? Um, I just tap it and I hold it. It gives a much larger jump. So, and then the same works for W2. Both up and W, A, D, left, right. So, those are how the keys are working. So, that's how we add jumping. So, now what we're going to add is when Mario falls into the void, he respawns because you can't just have him fall endlessly like this. You need to have them respawn. So we're going to have if player y 
this is really useful, if player y is less than some negative number, like say negative 200, if player y, that's the, the Mario's y position, if player y is less than 200, then we're just going to respawn, respawn Mario, and that is going to reset all of these coordinates, these scroll x, scroll y, next scroll x, next scroll y, player x, player y. So now if we try falling off the edge, you see after a little bit, it resets. Actually, I'm going to decrease that a little bit. So say negative 300. See like that. See, falls off and he respawns. And also another thing I'm going to do, you know how if you go to the left in Mario games, the camera sort of stops moving? Well, the way we are going to do that is we're going to get an if statement. We're going to get if next scroll x is less than zero. So you see, if I show next scroll x, you see it's going less than zero. It's becoming a negative number when I go to the left, or to the left of zero. So we're going to say if next scroll x is less than zero, we're going to set it to zero. So that it's this is not going to change the player x, only the next, only the scrolling x, what it looks like when you scroll. So now, if I go to the right, everything's normal, but if I go to the left, you see the camera is sticking to where it is right now. And we can do the same thing with scroll y. So if I duplicate this, and do this, if I duplicate it, so if I put this right about here, if next scroll y is less than zero, then we're going to set end scroll y to zero. So now if I fall off the edge, you see the camera's going to stick like that. And the last thing that I'm going to show you right now is why we have this box right here. So why do we have this box? Well, because it's perfectly smooth we're running into this wall right here and the box is not getting caught on anything. It has perfectly smooth edges. So if so, I'm going to make another costume right now. I'm just going to paint another costume. And I'm just going to draw something crazy. Like I'm going to draw something crazy. Now this, and I'm going to call it just C or something. And I'm going to make it uh, a different color. So I'll make it red. I'll make it red and fill it like that, so it's a crazy costume. This kind of thing would get caught on everything. Also, the last thing, we have another thing we have to do is we have to go into motion and set the rotation style to left-right because we don't want Mario to rotate upside, to turn upside down like that. So we're gonna set it to left-right and Actually, I'll make it an M, so so you can see how that works. So, so M like that. You see, if we didn't, if we if we didn't set it to left to right, so, if, so the default is all around. Then if then we would get this. See that? It would grow, It would turn upside down. So we have to set it to left right. And the reason why we have this hitbox is because. Where, the way Scratch scripts work is the, whatever is shown in the project is always based on what is at the end. So we're going to switch this cost, we're going to switch costume to this drawing that we made in red. Right at the end of the one frame block. And at the start, we're going to switch it to hitbox. This is very important. Switch it to hitbox right at the start and switch it to this costume. And that way, you see, it's not getting caught on anything. See, if we didn't do that, then this part of the M would get caught in the wall and stuff, and it would not be very good. So, this hitbox is very useful for that. It's, it has perfectly smooth edges, it's not going to get caught on anything. So that's what we have right there. And also in this switch costume, you're gonna put a switch costume to Mario costume number because that is gonna switch it 
to whatever whatever this number is. So you see right now, Mario custom number is two. Remember how we set it to two at the very start of the tutorial, um, because we have because that's the costume number right here. It's number two. See that? So that is basically all for the first tutorial. I think that's everything I showed in the first part of the tutorial at the start of this video. So, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm sorry if it was too long, um, but that, that that's basically it. So stay tuned for part two when we're going to add in some more details and possibly Cappy. So, thank you for watching this tutorial and I hope it helped you and I hope we can get excited about 3.0 and stop panicking about it and stuff like that. So, thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial. And especially thanks to Griff Patch for making this wonderful scrolling engine the basis of this tutorial. Thank you.